Welcome back, Zerke fans, to another exhibition match. This time, once again, Spudbook and Acronym. After the last game, which I'm assuming happened pre prior to this one, I actually didn't quite carefully check what the ordering was. It is possible that there was a match in between these two, between these two players. I don't actually... Oh, there was. There's actually a few. So, that win counter is a little bit off, I guess? I'm not entirely sure. Yeah, it looks like this was played about an hour after the previous one. I guess someone... people got rest. Anyway, this map is... This map is entirely a land map, no water this time around. And it's also a fairly hilly map, as you can see. And it has quite a few metal, metal spots. A lot of metal spots. This is a very metal-rich map. This is one of the easiest maps to build up quickly on. The only downside, of course, being that most of that metal is in the center. So most players will typically go along to one of the corners to take that over because it's a safer expansion, while also expanding just a little bit outside of their base, and then try to take the nearest center, but that that's usually where the contention starts. Going for the center hill is very important as a result of that. Anyway, we have Spadabuk and Aquanum, and let's get to it. Spadabuk going very quickly for Heavy Tank Factory. Aquanum, on the other hand, is going for Light Vehicles. An interesting choice, both players seeding the center hill. Now they're going for cloaky or shields. I often go for cloaky on my, myself on this map because I do enjoy having that center hill and the hills in general. It's very powerful. At this point, though, with Spiderplug and Aquanum's factory choices, only their commanders can go on those hills, which probably means that there'll be radar and maybe some static defense, and that's about it. And with Kodachi coming in for Spiderplug while Aquanum goes around the side with the dart, Kodachi will be able to deal a bit of damage to this angle, I think. Hmm, those Scorchers are going to be a problem, but if they don't go north, then that should be fine. That should actually be a really good angle. This one, Akronim's commander has not been upgraded, and there's no static defense on the queue. Svadaplug, on the other hand, they've set up one defender. Not in the best position, though. They expected an attack from the south. The defender being slightly blocked off by the factory. Not so bad that it's going to hit the factory, though. I have lost a factory having that happen. Defenders can be really treacherous sometimes. And no static defense so far. Aquanim, are they about to build it? I don't know. The Kodachi does have to deal with the commander. Now fully upgrade. Well, not fully upgrade, but has their level 1, which is the important upgrade. Light particle beam up. That Mason is not going to die. One more shot and it might. It's not a bad target, but yeah, the metal extractor, that's the target you really care about. Get as many metal extractors as you can and then get out of there. And thanks to the proximity of those solar collectors to the metal extractors, that also fortuitously happens to close the solar collectors as well, thanks to the damage taken. Taking out one metal extractor, the second metal extractor is going to burn down, the third metal extractor getting repaired, so it's not going to go down, but two out of three go down, Aquanum barely repairing that one, keeping it around, and not getting any energy in the meantime. Not a terrible raid. Could have conceivably been better, but not a terrible raid. 35 metal donated as a result. But that took, let's see, for, what was, 5 metal per second? About 20 sec- well, yeah, about 20-ish seconds to rebuild, so that's what 100 metal lost. So overall, I'd say that Svadabluk is ahead. They have more metal extractors, they have more of their valuable metal extractors claimed. That wasn't a terrible raid. And Svadabluk getting hit, I could go for a counter raid, taking out one of the metal extractors, taking out one of the lotuses as well, but getting torn apart by welders pretty quickly. Welders are scary. You gotta be careful with those things. They are armed. They deal not that much damage, but still. 43 damage per second is more than it sounds like sometimes. When you deal with a unit that only has a few hundred health. Like, 420 health? Yeah, those Scorchers go down in 10 seconds. And they probably won't kill them in time. I mean, enough Scorchers will, but that wasn't enough Scorchers, very clearly. So, Akinem right now, setting up a wall. Which is exactly what you do in this map. That's, another, that's the later thing you do. Set up a wall. Surprisingly not setting up the solar collectors in this sort of arrangement. Like, you set it up like this, or I guess if I demonstrate it using this. Set it up like this. Especially for the last two, if you do like something like that, and then you have one over here. That makes it harder for the other units to pass. It's a bit of an exploit, I suppose, but it just... It makes it less clear that there's just a dead end at the end of it, and they get caught in the corner, and you can easily flank them out. I haven't actually managed to take advantage of using that. I do it fairly often in maps like this, but I haven't managed to actually get in a situation where my opponent's units have gotten trapped as a result. And I had to double back, and then my units were in a good position to deal with it. But it seems like a prudent thing to do. Anyway, once again, Welder versus Scorcher, and Welders are doing a pretty decent job. 
Especially with the Lotus as a support. That's the one thing about welders. One thing about builders in general, they can build static defense wherever they like, especially with enough of them. And Spadapluk once again with the four workers all together. That's what Spadapluk always does. At least they did in the, not the last game, but the one before. Once they get going, they get groups of four workers just running around the map doing everything. So they very quickly, in, in this case with welders, offensively expand. Because they can get away with it. And at this point, Svatopluk has hardly any workers at all. Like, Svatopluk's style of play, very economical. It's very non-aggressive. Like, it is... It's focused on the late game. Basically just tries to put enough pressure on its opponent to discourage their opponent from attacking, and have enough defense to discourage their opponent from attacking, and also prevent their opponent from actually doing any damage should they attack. But build up to a handful of powerful units. Like, build up to Striders, or build up to probably Reavers in this case. Or Reapers, I mean, in this case. But otherwise, just set up a bunch of workers and have them build up quickly. That's basically how they work. Although they are going to lose one of their welders right now. Possibly two, but... No, not two. Just the one. Killing a bunch of Scorchers in the process. That was worth it. 250 metal for what's probably about... Yeah, 400 metal worth of reclaim. Just from the Scorchers alone, that was donation. Yeah, five Scorchers, 50 metal each. That's a donation. That paid for the welder killed. The Svadipluk, very hard to assault as a result of this. I think the only way you could really get around them... You'd have to, have to be really careful about how you raid. Or you just realize they're playing defensive and expand like mad. Because they are playing defensive. So expand like mad with a little bit less in the way of defenses, or a few more units. If you can poke out some weak point... I don't know if you can in this particular case. This is a lot of static defense. But if you can poke out to a weak point, that's going to probably rip them to shreds. Like, these Scorchers are actually going in a really good position. Unfortunately, they're going straight for the Welders. Akinem once again making that mistake. Don't go for the Welders. The Welders are really powerful. Welders are stronger than they look. So, those Scorchers, had they gone along this path? I think they could have. Not sure. Yeah, they could have gone along this path. Had they gone along that path, that would have been able to get them straight into the main base. Although, this Stardust is a bit of a... That's scary. I'll grant that. That is pretty scary. But still, had they done that, they would have been in a really powerful position. They probably would have been able to tear apart most of what's going on around the back. Because this Stardust actually doesn't have that much range. Like, its range is like this, but it's also going to be blocked by the Heavy Tank Factory. So they can attack from the other side, break through this, tear apart the Commander, and then rip apart the Heavy Tank Factory. But that's tricky to do. Like, you have to be really careful about your micromanagement. You have to be extremely good at this sort of thing. Aquanim is good at this sort of thing, though. They just... They're going for the welders, which is a mistake. It's just hard to realize, because most of the time, attacking the constructors is the right thing to do. But welders, because of their attack, and because Spotted loves to bunch up their workers like this, and thus allows them to build up static defenses in seconds. Like, one or two seconds, and a Lotus is up. You can't fight that head-on. Not without heavy assault units. Certainly not with raiders. Raiders cannot deal with this. Assault units should be able to. Like, if it was levelers, I'd say, yeah, go for it. Or raptors, I'd say, definitely go for it. But these aren't levelers or raptors, they're scorchers. And in come panthers, which should be able to tear apart the scorchers directly. And I'm going for this as a direct, direct fight, which is going to go in... This, oh man, Svadopluk's ripping those apart. That's half of the Scorchers gone. Akronim's been donating so many Scorchers to Svadopluk at this point. I think they've donated a grand total of about 12 or 15. Which pretty much paid for all these Panthers. Like, remember, it's 50 each. 12 or 15 is about... And that's about 600 metal. So that's at least that's half the Panthers, at least, that have been paid for. Just by donating Scorchers. Like, by Scorchers dying. So at least half of those Panthers were paid for by dead Scorchers. That's the scary part about fighting Spadafluk. They take full advantage of Reclaim. And they seem to know how to play defensively strong too. However, nice use of the Faraday, taking out those Panthers, stunning the Panthers out, beating them at their own game. Still loses a few of the Scorchers, but at least Aquanum's commander is right there, they can easily reclaim it. Hopefully they don't, as we saw, I think, last week, make the perfect enemy of the good and try to get a caretaker up rather than reclaiming it with their commander. Because if they do that, that's going to be, once again, a problem. And Svadopluk just rowing forward with these seven welders. Setting up Lotuses offensively. It's probably going to set up, yeah, Metal Extractor, because why not? It takes a couple seconds. This is really dangerous for Rockin' and their commander, once again out in the corner, 
Banishers, that's not so much a threat. The Reaper, bigger threat. Reaper gets rid of the commander. That's, that's gotta be painful. Akunim has to get rid of this Reaper and the commander is no longer there. There is the Mason, so at least that's reclaiming. But yeah, this is, this Reaper should be able to get away. The Panthers are right there. They'll be able to protect it. And that Reaper gets away, killing a few more Scorchers and the Masons, they can do what they can, but there's not much. They can reclaim it, but Aquanim has only one caretaker. Spotted on the other hand, has two caretakers and a commander, so effectively three caretakers. Aquanim, on the other hand, only has the one. They have been accessing metal most of this game, and they don't have enough energy either. Getting caretakers, yeah, Aquanim's going for the caretakers first. They're, they want to get the caretakers. They're only really comfortable using caretakers to reclaim. Whereas Spotted as we see, just loves to run around with either two groups of four or the one group of seven or eight. And just reclaim like mad, repair like mad. The Reaper completely repaired in about five seconds. That's the scary part about the way Spadapluk plays. It's Spadapluk knows how much power workers have, especially when in groups. Because most of the time you don't bunch up your workers because they can be hit by splash damage, which is prudent, especially when you're dealing with Cloaky Bottom. With Conjurers, that would be really scary. But when you're dealing with Welders, or in the last game that was on Trojan or on Titan Duel, that was with Hovercraft, so with Quills. For dealing with those tougher and faster workers makes a lot of sense. Makes all the sense in the world. And these are... yeah, five metal per second. I think welders are also five. I can't remember. Four or five. Seven point five! Holy crap! Welders are even more powerful than I thought. Seven point five build power. That means that seven of them are... that's... That's about 54 build power. Right there. Just around the map. So grabbing reclaims. So side of look can, for short periods of time, have an extra, basically double their economy. Extra 50 or so metal as they hit reclaim fields. Because those workers just going around taking everything. And the caretakers, on the other hand, caretakers take a while to build and that's... That's the thing about Akuna. Akuna's play. The one thing I'd suggest is don't be afraid to reclaim with workers and commanders. Don't feel the need to use caretakers. There are other units that work just fine for reclaim, and this fight, once again, going in Spadapluk's favor. Spadapluk at this point has a massive military advantage. They can just waltz in. How many Reapers they Reapers? Three Reapers. And more importantly, 12, 12 Welders, because the 12 Welders, I think, are more powerful than those Reapers. As you can see, 100 metal per second, because why not? Not super long, but it's long enough. Pull that in and then burst it out in, plus, in minus 40. Now, they're pushing 40 build power into that factory. I mean, we'll see here, Banisher is taking 10 seconds. The Welders take like three. The Reapers, where's the Reaper? I see the cost of the Reaper. 850, that's 20 seconds for a Reaper. That's hardly any time at all for the for how long they survive. I mean, this one Reaper here is actually in a really dangerous spot, but with the nice support, good fire support from Spadapluk, very good mixed force, and the Welders are right behind to repair everything. Akunum cannot deal with this and throws in the towel. So that is how Spadapluk plays. They play defensive, they basically put you in a situation where you cannot harass them, and they have roaming workers that cannot easily be assaulted. I think if the, ro if the workers got heavily assaulted, and it seems like the way to beat them is tear apart their workers as quickly as possible. If you're dealing with welders, go for levelers or another more assault rioty force. Don't go for raiders, but otherwise go for raiders. Try to hit their workers as quickly as possible. They're going to build up stag defense. Go for the workers. Hit them first. If the stag defense dies, and your units die, those workers get a ton of reclaim. If the workers die and the static defense lives, who cares? There would be another set of workers, but you destroyed a bunch of workers, which massively reduces Spadapluk's power. The other thing is Spadapluk is really good at convincing their opponent they don't want to attack, either because they think there's too much static defense, or because they think that there's too strong units that they have to deal with up front, as you saw with the Dantes in the first game. And that is basically how Spadapluk plays. Is they mind game their opponent into thinking that they cannot attack, and then they expand a much behind it, go heavy economy with a bit of defense, and then flip it over into a lot of offense with repairs like this. Like a few big units that can be easily repaired, and a bunch of workers coming in the back to reclaim and repair. Yeah, Flora's pointing out you take the, you prepare for the late game as well. That works too. Just the hard part is if you're expanding a ton, if that's the other counter, of course, against a defensive player is to expand everywhere, take the rest of the map, and just outproduce them. That's also a good idea. That's another way of getting about it. So yeah, in this case, it's almost don't raid. Just expand. Out expand. Expansion beats defense. Defense beats offense. So don't go for offense. Go for expansion. 
Just go for expansion with a bit of defense, because Fatoplik will flip into offense when necessary. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. That is, I think, going to be it for me today. So thank you all for watching, and have a good night, everyone. Oh, yeah, sorry. Actually, before I go, one to two things. First off, next Saturday, I will not be doing any stream, because I'm going to be in Chicago for Combo Breaker. That's the tournament I've been talking about with my Skullgirls cast, primarily. That's where I'm going to be. So that's going to be that. I don't think the tournament's going to be next week. It'll probably be the following following week, since the following week is the last week of May, not next week. Next week is the 23rd. The following week is the 30th, and that's probably when the 1v1 tournament's going to be. I'm guessing. If not, then you, got, you don't have me commentating, but I'm guessing it's going to be the 30th. And otherwise, that's about it. So everything else is going to be relatively normal. Saturday cast just won't be there next week. And I think Wednesday I'll probably do a Skull Rolls thing because I'll be leaving the next day. So, apart from that, that's it. Thank you all for watching again, and have a good night, everyone.